Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Wednesday. The children are back in school without textbooks for more than two years, getting on to three. We are happy about it. Nobody is complaining, but we are buying Christmas trees. This morning, I am not a happy man because dovetailing from the conversation we just had earlier, a problem that has existed so many times, and we'll get to talk about it. Yesterday, I saw the board chairman of the Ghana Airport Company trying to explain himself as to why we spent too much or whatever money. I'm not saying anybody did anything wrong. But whatever money we spent to buy Christmas trees and inspiration and chandeliers at the airport. And we are justifying it and trying to relate it to 2016 and saying that in 2016, we spent so much. I would have expected that the, the PR department, which is paid, with the taxpayers' money at the Ghana Airports Company at this point, would have come up with a statement, would have shown us the receipts. I was expecting the board chairman to show us the receipts. In a country where children lie on their bellies to assess education, where human beings drink dirty water with, with goats and sheep and cows, one would have expected that when now we are being told that we are not in normal times and that we will have to uh, try and sacrifice, we're expecting that things will be done differently. The argument is that 2016 is a yardstick. But we all know that Christmas trees do not expire. They are not perishable goods. So did we buy another Christmas tree in 2017? Did we buy another in 2018? Did we buy another in 2019? Did we buy another in 2020? And did we buy another in 2021? I don't know. But if we are buying Christmas trees in 2021, it means that we may have bought them from the previous years. So why is no, nobody showing us receipts? Because as for info, infographics, we can all do it. We can all get a graphic designer to do infographics for us. Make a solid case for us in the spirit of fairness and accountability. If you are quoting figures, add receipts to the figures, official receipts. There's pro forma invoice and there's an invoice. But there's also receipts at the end of the provision of the service or delivery of goods. So 2016 is the year stake, yes. And this goes on to the lap of the managing director of the Ghana Airport Company and the PR department. You have the PR department which paid. This morning they will go to work. Your board chairman is explaining because he says his name has been mentioned, rightly so. He has a right of reply. But don't you think that you are allowing your board chairman to perhaps do too much? What do you go to work to do as the PR manager of the Ghana Airport Company? What do you go to work to do as the managing director of the Ghana Airport Company? Because first of all, it is your job. <clears throat> it is not the job of the chairman or the board or the board members to be doing procurement. It is your job in corporate governance. It's supposed to be supervising you rightly, as he said, to be ensuring that you don't overspend and all of that. But it is your job. In any case, in any case, the invoice which was, and yesterday I heard the explanation that, oh, it was because they wanted to understand and all of that. Me, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not a, a legend or a genius in corporate governance. But I do know that if you are asking for an invoice, for example, and you want to see how much is being spent, for example, it will be addressed to the managing director, whoever is in charge of procurement. And then they can simply copy the board chairman or the board. So we are being told to tighten our seat belts and we are being told that we spend how much to buy Christmas trees in this country and we are explaining it away and everybody thinks that it's a, some kind of a joke. Where are the receipts? If you say we spent so much in 2016, maybe in 2017, 2018, this in, in, in 2021 is the lowest or the cheapest, you should be able to provide receipts to back it. In the spirit of fairness and accountability, provide the official receipts from the suppliers that... X person did the uh, transportation for you. X person mounted it. X person dismantled it. X person provided inspiration A, B, C, D. X person did this. These are the receipts to back my claim. That's how to do it. Show working. Show evidence. Where are the receipts? 
We want to see the receipts. And we want to read from the PR department of the Ghana Airports Company. When some of us stand here to advocate for young people to be given opportunities, we advocate for it because we believe that the future belongs to the young people and the young people should be able to do a clean job. I'm not saying anybody has done anything wrong. I'm saying when you make a strong defense for yourself, provide the receipts to back your claim. Because this morning, there are children who are going to school without textbooks. There are children who will be sitting on cement blocks to assess education. There are children who will be learning ICT without the requisite, uh, what do you call it, machines. They have no laptop, they have no computers, they have no mouse. Their teachers would have to improvise and use stones to teach them how to do that. This morning, there's a pregnant woman who is so broke, who, who wants to have a child. And I remember President Kufu had a sweet policy like that. I, apparently, they, they are the same children who are enjoying free SHS now. Those who got the free maternal care from President Kufu's regime. If you do the calculus, apparently. There are people who, are, who, are, who have been detained at the hospitals over 100 cities, 80 cities and all of that. So when we are asking people to, to sacrifice and we have some of these spendings and people are asking questions and all we can do is to explain and explain and explain and say it was even cheaper. Why is 2016 the, the Aztec, for example? Why is it not 2017? Why is it not 2018? Why is it not 2019? Why is it not 2020? How much did we spend over those periods? And where are the receipts? That's what I'm asking for. Where are the receipts? Where are the receipts? That's a simple question I'm asking. So good morning to you. Mr. Managing Director of the Ghana Airports Company, good morning to you. It is not your board chairman's job to be explaining to us. His name has been mentioned. He's my senior man. He has explained himself well enough, I think. Now let the corporate institution, the Ghana Airports Company, be speaking. Give us a statement. What are the true state of affairs from where you sit? Where are the receipts? Because the service has been delivered. I'm sure somebody, uh, money has exchanged hands. In any case, the company that gave you 50,000 CDs sponsorship, what did they give you the sponsorship for? And what benefits are they expecting from the sponsorship? We have all done event management before. It's not a GIG, it's basic. When somebody sponsors you, there's a certain sponsorship benefit that comes with it. What were they looking forward to? Or they were do just doing work for Nyami, Alago Pay. So there, they gave 50,000, we saved money, but the totality of the spend and all of that, let's see the receipts. That's all we're asking for this morning. So good morning to you, Mr. Managing Director of the Ghana Airports Company. Your silence is too loud. Good morning to you, PR Manager of the Ghana Airports Company. Your silence is too loud. And don't hide behind your board chairman. You have to speak. We will be on this matter until you speak, until you show us the receipts. We will be on this matter. Because yes, we are buying Christmas trees. Other people have also bought Christmas trees. Why is there no news? I don't know what the motive is. But if the argument is that some people um, do not perhaps like the individual of, of the board chairman or the persona of the board chairman, personality of the board chairman, I don't have a problem with him. I don't, I don't know if anybody has a problem with the board chairman. I'm saying that if you have cause to defend yourself and to say because your name was mentioned, you have to defend yourself, the right thing to do is to present receipts to back your claim that with this for X amount from company A, B, C, D, then you have the receipts. Then we can go to GRA and you go and check if the company also pay taxes on the monies they got from us as a state because we are all, all looking for small, 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 small monies to survive. No be so. No be so. That's the first one. Now, my second thing is that I need you to notice and everybody cannot love you. Everybody cannot love you. So don't lose your peace over those who hate you. Because those who convince other people to hate you, they cannot convince God to hate you. Did you hear me? Everybody cannot love you. So don't lose your peace over those who say they don't love you. Don't worry. They may have convinced other mortals to say that you, they hate you, they don't like you, like they do for me. But they can't convince God not to like me. I just need you to keep that in mind. Now, let's go to the University of Ghana. We'll start, we'll go to Utah. But first, Oliver, show me that photograph from 2021. Selection process for accommodation. I, I put up this post a year ago in 2021. 
In Ghana, we ballot for where to sleep in our desire to acquire further knowledge. Sorry, no bed. A level 100 student was told this. A level 100 student. And you know the painful thing? The painful thing is that some of them travel from far away. So they come from very poor families. Their parents have been able to survive and give them small gari, small uh, uh, one month thousand or small uh, baby tilapia or whatever it is. They've given them all those small, small ones. And then only for them to come and they are told that they can't have beds. So now they are looking for where to perch. And in, in waiting and trying to perch, they, they squander everything. They eat everything. And then by the time it, it, lessons begin or lectures begin, they have nothing to survive on. Sorry, no bed. One full year, one full cycle, 11 January 2021, I put up this post. When we went to Lego, I went to Lego, I took this photo myself. One full year, we are talking about the same problem as if we had no Ministry of Education, as if we had no Deputy Minister in charge of tertiary education, as if we had no ministry or, or if, if I, a government that was thinking about education accommodation. One full year. The children are returning to school today. No textbooks. Everybody is quiet. We'll be speaking big, big English. Today, I hear we are launching what? Um, Tibet, uh, is it Tibet or uh, STEM schools? We are going to, the president is going to cut sword. If our priorities are right. If our priorities are indeed right. We would have provided the textbooks for the teachers. And those teachers who do not have their laptops would have received them by now because we say we are digitalizing and they need to start using them in the classrooms if our priorities are right. But we are interested in the public show. Public show because we want applause. Public show. That's what we are interested in. I'm not saying STEM is not a good thing. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, brilliant idea. In fact, that is the way to go. But I'm saying that when even the analog system is faulty, you need to fix it before you leapfrog into the, the digital system. You know me so? You don't have textbooks. The children are going back to school today. And that's why somebody will go and print, AFO agreed to do juju for the students and they won. What are we teaching the students? That they should use ways and means, pack, 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 to be able to survive. What happened to hard work? What happened to hard work and dedication? What happened to it? It is not funny anymore. This is not funny anymore. And this is it. This is, this is a, a major slap in our faces. And I'm saying that for most of those people who make some of these policies, their children don't even school here. Their children don't breathe the kind of air we breathe here. Their children don't see the ball at circle. Their children don't read that we spent money to buy a Christmas tree. Their children don't read these things. Their children are not part of it. Sorry, no bed. They pass their exam. And the situation is specific. Go to Legon, you see them roaming around. Go to tech, they are roaming around. Go to UCC, go to UDS, go to UHAS. They are roaming around as if they committed a crime. University education in Kwame Krumah's Ghana. And most of those people at the helm of affairs today who are in their 60s, getting to 70s, those who have gone past 70s, we, we, you know what the story was back then. You had the luxury of electric stick stoves in your rooms. You had a kitchenette, benefit of a kitchenette. At some point, some of you even got sardines and the rest, and you had to protest that the sardines were not coming. You got supplies just for you to go to school and learn because we value education as a country. So what happened? That now you are not providing sardines, you are not providing electric stoves, you are not providing a kitchenette, but even where the children will have to lay their heads to go and access lectures, what is happening? This is not good for us. This, this, sorry, no bed. And we are balloting for it. We queue for everything in this country. We queue for watching, we queue for jollof at weddings, we queue for everything. Now we are queuing where to sleep in schools. Now we are queuing. This morning, let's stay with, with the university. I say that teachers, the university teachers, the reward can also be here on earth. Teachers' reward can be on earth too. I had conversations with some university teachers about two or three days ago. And straight away, I could tell that the lecturers are overburdened. Straight away, I could tell. If you doubt it, check the lecturer to student ratio detected by GTEC. The National, Accredit uh, the, the, uh, uh, National Accreditation Board is now GTEC. 
Check it. Check the student-teacher ratio. The, the lecturers are overburdened. They go the extra mile for the extra numbers that are padded on them. Schools will re resume. You go, go to the lecture halls. People sit on windows and all of that to assess lectures. Some teach as many as 1,200 students per semester. Three months, 1,200, 600, 800, 900 students. One man, one woman. So they will research, they will lecture, they will mark scripts, they will do quizzes, IAs, and all of that. What is their salary? The reason they are on strike, what is their salary? And you see, because the salary is so poor, it doesn't make the lecturers concentrate to stay in the classroom. Fact. Because they are looking for alternatives, side gigs to support the patterns that they get to take care of themselves and their families. So their concentration is divided. Once concentration is divided, research time is reduced. Once research time is reduced, you see them consulting either for a firm or whatever it is, and then it affects the quality of the conversation in the lecture halls and the impact of same on students. Because the lecturer is supposed to sit down to research. Why, well, you think they're asking for a book and research allowance to be increased because they want to go and buy kebab and sobolo with it? They want to research. That is what academia is. If you don't research and you don't publish, you will not be promoted. It's basic. All are big men and women. They know this. And then you find that the quality of the, of the conversation in the lecture hall is reduced. It's reduced to emotions. And then instead of being scientific, you find that emotions take center stage in that conversation in the lecture hall. That situation frustrates the lectures. It frustrates the, the lecturers so much that they easily get angry. They are stressed and distressed. I mean, ask the students. They'll tell you. A lecturer comes to the classroom. He writes the first thing. You ask a question, and the lecturer is angry. The lecturer is angry because if you ain't yet, the lecturers also have families. The schools are reopening. This is school fees week. Next week is another school fees week. They have families too. Their children are in the schools. They have to pay school fees. They have to buy fuel. They have to get all those things. Of course, he's a university lecturer. He's a doctor. He's a professor. When there's a family meeting and he goes, they expect him to give more. Because he's teaching at the University of Ghana. He's teaching at GIJ. He's teaching at UCC. So they expect him to give some more. And they see their contemporaries in other fields. But what are they to show for the sacrifice that they give to us? Because they see their contemporaries. I mean, somebody has a PhD, is working with a manufacturing company or is working somewhere in an oil company. Can you imagine how much they make? Compare that to what a university professor makes. What do they retire with after teaching for so many years? What do they retire with? I'm asking, what do they retire with? We give them allowances. But you and I know that we don't calculate your, 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 what do you call it, your pension on your allowances. We don't. So they get all the allowances. It, it makes their money look, look good. But when they are going on retirement, we look at their basic salary. And that's what we calculate. So a lecturer, somebody who would have been a professor, has thought all his life, then he, he comes on retirement and he's getting like 700, 800,000. I mean, what, sort, what sort of life is that? What sort of life is that? And this is a country that says we are interested in education. Because allowances are not factored into your calculation for your pension. The Ghana Tertiary Education Council, that's GTEC, what I mentioned to you. They are demanding, for example, that the entry qualification into academia is an MPhil. They say if you don't have a Master of Philosophy degree, you cannot lecture in a university in this country. Fair enough. Now, if you are expecting that people will have MPhil, because they would have done their first degree and they would have done their MPhil at their own cost, then they come in as assistant lecturers. You expect them to, within that period, for example, if you give them a four or five year or six year contract, within that period, to also get a PhD. Because you want them to make progress. And you, you only publish and, and upgrade and get promoted in, in that light. Now, PhD cost, PA, the PhD, uh, what the qualification cost, it, it comes at their, own, at their own expense. They have to pay for it. So first, you want them, you want top quality. You want them to enter with an MPhil. 
become assistant lecturers and have to rise up, have to go and do their own PhDs, have to pay uh, their own monies and come and use the qualifications to improve your system, but you are not supporting them. So while you are aiming for quality personnel, we are also unwilling and reluctant to pay them good money for the brightest and best that they offer to us. What kind of cruelty is that? And that is where the pushback comes in. That is where Utah will push back. Because you will see the small numbers of lecturers. The small numbers of lecturers. Every single time. Lecturers are, re are, are retiring. Now we are not getting quick replacements for them. And in some of the universities, the reality is that they advertise and nobody comes. People use that as launch pads into industry. People use that. People use that as launch pad and, and they travel outside the country and go and lecture elsewhere. It's a ticking time bomb. Because the older the wine, the better it is. When they stay in the classroom for a longer period and maybe they juggle with industry a bit, their experience is rich. The conversation in the lecture hall is rich. But once you divide the attention, because you're not paying them well, so they have to go and look for extra sources of funds to support themselves, then you defeat the whole purpose. A teacher is a teacher. So the new ones get in, they get in with their MPhil, they, they survey the situation, they see it's not working, they get a PhD, and they check out, they go into industry. Because if he's consulting for a certain, a certain uh, organization, he would make more money than if it is teaching in a classroom, marking 1,200 scripts. Those who choose to stay are also not being looked after well. Those lecturers who choose to stay are not being taken care of. Today, we are making them look as if demanding for better conditions of service is almost a crime. Demanding for better conditions of service is almost a crime. But the lecturers taught all of us. If it had not been for the lecturers, we would not be here. So teacher's reward can also be here on this earth. Same problem, no solution. Why? What kind of a people are we? What kind of a people are we? What kind of a people are we? I'm asking us this morning. Can we pause and think, what kind of a people are we? What kind of a people are we? Think about this. Let it sink in this morning. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Good morning.